I first started having regular vision experiences a little more than five years ago, I would, I would have this recurring vision in which my spirit was taken out uh, outside of the earth and I could see the whole earth. There was a mass of humanity surrounding the earth in this particular vision. They looked like this. Did you make these when you were a little kid? So <laughs> if you're younger, probably not. So people my age, before computers, when we were kids, we had to entertain ourselves with cut paper. So this is what I would see, this um, just rows and rows of, of people surrounding the earth, but not just one row around the earth, but multiple rows upon rows of people so that it looked kind of like this that's not looking very good this mesh of humanity surrounding the entire earth and now in the vision and remember this is just a vision so when i have these it, it, they're very symbolic i'm not saying it's something that was actually happening i believe that these were saints believers in Jesus Christ who have already passed away and that part of their assignment at this point because I do believe we have jobs in heaven is to intercede for the, the earth and so they were in position so that the glory of God could filter through them go through them and then down into the earth through their prayers for their intercession prayers for us and as we pray our prayers then connect with their prayers and so we are all joining hands with heaven along with of course the Holy Spirit and with all of God's angels. And so I realized a couple of days ago that, you know, I haven't had that particular vision in a long time. And so I asked God about it. Why am I no longer having this uh, mesh of saints vision that I used to see often? And I believe he said, well, the saints are in place. My angels are in place. I'm waiting for you. And I believe he was talking to the church. I believe that he is waiting for a critical mass of us to uh, fall on our knees before him and to understand our need for him and for his um, saving hand, that we are not capable of saving ourselves and that uh, we humble ourselves and fall to our knees and cry out to him. And this is very biblical because if you think about the, the way God always worked historically in the Old Testament with the Israelites, in the good times they would fall away from God and then God would lift up his protective hand from over them and allow bad things to happen to them, like the, their enemies would come in and defeat them and take them into captivity or plagues or something like that. But the reason God let that stuff happen was so that they would understand the truth that God is their savior. God is their salvation and that they are not strong enough uh, or powerful enough to save themselves. And so then when God allowed these things to happen, that is when the Israelites would turn back to God and cry out to him. And then when enough of them did that, God would intercede on their behalf. And so I think that's what's been happening to us in our country, the United States of America. We've lived in this just the lap of luxury for a hundred years and had this just, just wonderful lives of ease. And because of that, the church has fallen away from God in so many ways. And we have adopted the wicked culture that is around us and we have allowed all of this, these idols to come into, into the church, worshiping entertainments and worshiping our own flesh in so many different ways. Not all of us, but I think corporately, most of us would agree that that is true of the church in the West. And so I think what we have seen in the past five to eight years, the same thing you would do for the Israelites. He's slowly raising up his hand of protection from us. And as he does that, the culture around us grows more and more wicked and insane. And you can see that happening over the past five, eight, ten years. And so the good thing about that is just like the way the Israelites responded, I think more believers than probably in decades have gotten really serious about prayer. We've gotten more serious about our relationship with Jesus and surrendering and submitting to Jesus Christ in ways that we have not in the past in decades. And so we're very excited about that. And I believe like there's this level that this math, critical mass that God is waiting for. So in Revelations 5 and Revelations 8, we learn about these golden bowls filled with incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And I believe that God is waiting for them to fill up enough before he would intercede in our behalf. And now I wish it weren't like this. I wish that we could 
um, be really into God during the good times, but human nature is just not like that. And so and this is the way it's always been. During the good times, we fall away from God. So I know it's not everybody, and there's a lot of us that have been spending years now praying really hard and interceding and just crying out to God, but there are so many that haven't been. And so I think in the past several years, especially leading up to this election, I think that we are seeing this rising up of believers in Jesus Christ on their knees, crying out to God like never before. And I think that is a really good thing. And so for those of us who've been praying so hard for so long, it's hard to wait, it's hard to be patient, but we learn in 2 Peter 3, 9, Peter says, the Lord is not slow about his promise as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not willing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. And so I think that's what we've been seeing. We've been seeing God wait. And as he slowly lifts up his, his hand of protection from over us and things get crazier and more and more wicked around us, more and more people get saved. More and more people turn to God. More and more people realize their need for God. And so that is why God has been waiting. So I'm, I'm very excited about this. I think that that it's these are all good signs. I think that God very soon is going to be willing to intercede in our behalf. In fact, on October 31st, so on Halloween night, and so you know that that is a night of great wickedness in our country. And so I was on my knees before God praying, and I believed I heard God say, the bowls are almost full. So be encouraged and just keep on keeping on, keep on praying, keep on interceding, keep on worshiping, keep leaning into Jesus, keep working on the sanctification process and becoming more and more surrendered and submitted to God. And it's going to happen, church. I really believe we're going to see amazing things that, that we have not seen in our entire lifetimes. So be encouraged. I love you with the love of Christ. Mwah.